keep your cats, dogs, gerbils, or even your three-year-old child well away from this deadly plant because this guy is an animal eater. That's right, it turns out Audrey from the Little Shop of Horrors wasn't an entirely made-up creation. There's tons of plants in the world that lure their prey like the child catcher and feast on their blood and bones until there's absolutely nothing left. Pretty grim, eh? This guy is one of five that we'll have a little look at in this video, so strap yourself in and be prepared to suffer with nightmares for the next couple of weeks. This harmless and rather beautiful looking creature is called an Nepenthes, otherwise known as a pitcher plant or even a monkey cup and is part of the blood craving group of plants known as carnivorous plants. These toilet bowl looking cups that hang from them, interesting facts about that coming up by the way, are traps that the plant sets to lure insects and even some small mammals in and then devour them like the beasts they are. You see, these guys have evolved to grow in parts of the world where the soil is low in nutrients, so they've resorted to preying on unsuspecting victims that are a little bit too inquisitive for their own good. And these traps can get pretty big, sometimes up to 15 centimeters in diameter, easily enough to trap a little mammal. In fact, they're called monkey cups because apparently monkeys like to drink the liquid from the pitchers and small monkeys have apparently fallen in. Here's how it works. Let's say you're a little mouse in the jungles of Madagascar and you're scavenging for food and whatnot minding your own business. Let's call him Bob. Our Bob has a bit of a sweet tooth and he has the gut to show for it. A couple of hours into his scavenge for food, he notices a lovely sweet sugary fragrance coming from a nearby plant that gets his attention. Ooh, what's this? A cup full of sugar just for me. Lovely, Bob thinks to himself as he climbs onto the pitcher and starts licking the inside where all that lovely sweet nectar is hiding. But what's this? This cup isn't just sugary, it's slippery as hell and he's struggling to stay aboard until plop. In he falls into the acidic watery liquid that is pulled at the bottom. Fight as he might, he just can't escape. Not without a ladder and some friends. The sides of the pitchers are full of wax and he just can't get a grip. Eventually, poor Bob passes away and the digestive enzymes in the acidic water that is pulled in the pitcher gets to work at digesting Bob's body, satiating itself until its next meal. So think of a pitcher plant's cup as its stomach. Grim. Now doesn't that sound like the worst way to go? Let's spare a moment for Bob, my entirely fictional jungle mouse. Enough of that. So that's how these beasts get the nutrients they need when they can't get it from the soil. These guys aren't fussy, no, 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 no. They'll accept anything into their gut as long as it's got lovely nitrogen in. Even poo, yeah. Poo. I mentioned earlier that the pitchers look like toilet bowls, and honestly, that's not far from the truth. You see, some species of Nepenthes, those that hang out in places where prey is hard to come by, have more or less given up their carnivore diet and instead encourage animals to poo into their pitchers. I mean, if you're that hungry, I guess you'll eat anything. This lovely fun fact was discovered when mountain tree shrews were found sitting on the pitchers of the plant, licking the food oozing from the lid while plopping their droppings inside. But mountain tree shrews weren't the only ones at it. Birds, bats and rats were also in on the act, eating and pooping into the pitcher at the same time, and the plant most certainly did not mind. In fact, the poo was found to be so nutritious it gave these pitcher plants more than twice the nitrogen of prey caught by other pitcher plants. Happy days! So who do you think the winner is? The animal eater or the poo eater? Let me know down below. You can, of course, get these weird creatures as houseplants for your own entertainment, but just keep the pets and children away, my plant friend. Now we have this harmless, beautiful looking plant. Well, not so much if you're a poor, unsuspecting fly or insect with an inquisitive mind. This is Drosera, otherwise known as Sundew, which is actually the biggest group of carnivorous plants in the whole world. Here's a fun fact for you. They can be found in every continent in the world, except for Antarctica. Lots of folks have them in their homes, of course, and you often see them for sale in your local nursery. So let me know if you've got one down below. Now, these aren't quite as sneaky as the pitcher plant or a couple of other plants I'll get to in a bit, but they are just as deadly to an insect if they succumb to its bewitching charms. Sundews are flypaper plants that trap prey in sticky hairs on their leaves. Long, evil-looking tentacles jut out from the leaves and are laced with a sticky gland at the tip. These droplets look like dew in the glimmering sun, which is where the name comes from. So imagine you're a mosquito, the insect that is most widespread in the habitat where sundews live. You're buzzing around like an annoying 
looking for a holiday maker to feast on for lunch, but get distracted by a sweet, potent nectar near the floor. Hmm, I guess I'll be having pudding first and then hunt out a blood sandwich after, you think to yourself, and pop yourself onto the harmless looking long tentacles and start munching away. But what's this? You can't move. The nectar is like glue, you're stuck, and now you're being coiled and smothered by the tentacles until you can't breathe. Damn it! You've met your end and all you wanted to do was annoy some holiday makers and have a bit of lunch. It takes just 15 minutes for the enzymes in the plant to digest Mr. Mosquito and absorb the nutrients and there is one less annoying bug in the world. You might think that these guys are only capable of catching flying friends, but they are more than capable of catching insects as big as beetles. Like our friendly pitcher plants from earlier, sundews are found in environments where nitrogen is hard to come by, so have evolved into creature munching machines to satiate themselves. So these guys are the perfect accompaniment to any houseplant collection because they can hoover up the most annoying of all creatures the fungus gnat. Where's my credit card? I want at least 10 of these bad boys. In a similar vein to the sinister sundew with the next deadly assassin, the peculiarly putrid Bingicula. These guys are just as popular as sundews in the nurseries, so you'll be able to easily pick up these murderous monsters no problem. Ingiculas come in many shapes and sizes, but they all share the same greasy appearance of the leaves, which gives it its nickname, butterwort. Now butterworts don't bother themselves with the curling action of the sundew. Its murderous approach is much more ice cold. It instead lures the insect onto its sticky, greasy platforms, the leaves, through its scent of sweet nectar and shiny appearance. Once the fly, ant or fungus gnat is trapped in the gluey residue, the digestive acid that is found in the leaves upper surface will begin its deadly work in breaking down the soft tissue, leaving nothing but the outer exoskeleton. This is why you often see the disturbing remnants of the dead decomposing on the leaves like an open grave. And here's the gruesome thing, the more the insect tries to escape, the more likely it is to become further trapped in the pads, like the stuck in quicksand, providing a tasty nutritious meal for the plant. Interestingly, some pingiculas actually develop different functioning leaves depending on the season. During the dormancy period in the cooler months, it will produce innocent, non-carnivorous leaves used only for photosynthesis due to the lack of insects showing themselves in winter. However, once spring rolls around, it will start producing new, murderously sticky leaves from its center, readying itself to catch and feast on potential victims for nourishment. Unlike sundews, pingiculas aren't found solely in bugs. They're found in bogs, rock crevices, and sandy soils across North and South America, Europe, and Asia, so depending on the type you have, they don't all want to be living in bog-like conditions, but they're certainly worth having in your fungus gnat war chest. We now come to the king of all carnivorous plants. Every kid's favourite pastime when there's just not much to do. Oh, was that just me? Well, in my defence, it was before the dawn of the internet and I was a bored little lad and mother gave me one to keep me amused. Anyway, we all know and love the Venus flytrap. Dioneo muscipula if you want its fancy name. It's perhaps one of the most visually interesting plants going and has captivated the world over with its murderous charm and the way it catches its prey. Very dramatic, but also very elegant. Those jaw-like leaves are a beautiful but dangerous menace to the insect world. Contrary to popular belief, this this plant does not only eat flies. No, he's not that fussy. Anything dumb enough to cross his path will be a prime rib in the eyes of this monster. Here's how it works, and it's pretty fascinating. Imagine you're a little fly, a common fly that annoys folks by buzzing around the room the second you open the damn window. We'll call our friend Dylan. Now, Dylan is a playful fellow and is constantly enchanted by the bright colours and scents of the jungle. He's buzzing around aimlessly and notices a gorgeous red colour out of all the green and flies down to check it out. He lands on the red surface carefully because his mum and dad always remind him about the dangers of plants in the jungle. He prods here and there to see if anything bad is going to happen, but nothing does. He prances around on the red mat like a breakdancer because he's found something that will keep him entertained for hours, and then boom, before he knows it, 
it, he's been trapped by the jaws of the Venus flytrap. Now you might be wondering why it took so long for Dylan to meet his maker, and the truth is, the Venus flytrap is a cool customer. He knows not to waste his time on trivial things. Too many times he's wasted energy and closed his jaws for nout. So he's developed a system where he only closes his mouth when the tiny hairs on the inside of the trap are touched multiple times. This way, he knows for certain that lunch is ready and waiting. The traps are edged with small bristles that interlock when the trap shuts to ensure Dylan can't squirm out. Once trapped, the leaves close tighter to squash Dylan and enzymes are released to digest him. Grim. The trap reopens about 10 days later when the insect has been fully digested. The Venus flytrap is one of the very few carnivorous plants that moves to actively trap its prey, which is probably why it's become so popular. An honourable mention of the meat-eating plant world is the alien-looking cobra lily, so cool because of its snake-like appearance. The name alone of this bad boy is menacing, and much of his murderous work has been inspired by the pitcher plant from earlier, like some kind of copycat killer. Like the pitcher plant, this guy has evolved in areas where nutrients are hard to come by, so he feasts on prey instead. The distinctive hoods of these plants cunningly hide an attractive scent, which entices unsuspecting creatures creatures, both insect and mammal, to enter. Once inside though, they're in for a world of pain. The thing that marks this apart from the picture is that it has many false exits, meaning that the prey thinks it can escape, but it can't, all the while getting slowly digested by the plant. Talk about sadistic, these guys are even able to regulate the water they contain so that they can drown animals that have got stuck inside. Not one to mess around with then if you're an inquisitive creature. So let me know down below which plant is your favourite and why. I've recently bought a few and might do a few videos on them further down the line, but in the meantime, check out the video on the screen now for your next viewing pleasure and don't forget to subscribe.